Hi guys, my name is Allison Gomez. I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and in 2014, and again in 2015, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. If I had to tell you guys one thing that I was most passionate about in life, it would be to help others, and to especially help others that are going through or that have been through the same things that I have been through. And with that, that's such a huge reason why I've done a lot of the things that I've done in my life. One of those things being how I created a YouTube channel. When I was diagnosed, it hit me really hard. But when I had gotten diagnosed a second time, it hit me even harder. And for me, it was really, really difficult to feel like I had the right kind of support. Of course, I had the support from my family and from my friends, which was amazing. But it still felt like I was missing something to not have someone who actually knew what I was going through or knew exactly how I was feeling. And that's why I'm passionate about helping, helping those people who are going through the same thing because I've been in that place where I feel like I don't have that person that can connect with me. And if I can be that for somebody, then I'm doing what I love most. So the way that I actually found out about my medical condition is a really crazy story. So I mentioned how I was diagnosed twice, so I'll just go into how I found out the first time. So I was actually at Navy boot camp. It was my life dream to be in the military. So I was finally in a good place in my life. I was finally at boot camp and I was noticing something really strange going on. I was having swelling, like really bad swelling in my face every morning. So I'm thinking I'm having an allergic reaction. So I went to get all these tests done and it's not an allergic reaction. And obviously what we soon find out is that it's cancer. So I was actually 19 at the time when it happened and I did six cycles of chemotherapy. I started in November and then by April I was all finished. I was good to go. I was in remission. I'd actually gotten a job. I was just trying to get back to a normal life. And whenever I had my three month checkup is when they found my cancer again. So the fact that it had returned so quickly, having to get it taken care of was very urgent. I had to do chemotherapy again almost instantly. I had to do radiation and I also had to do a bone marrow transplant. So actually this month, March, I am two years uh, in remission from radiation and January of 2016 put me two years uh, past my bone marrow transplant so I'm in a good place right now but even though I'm in remission life after cancer sometimes can be very very difficult it can also be helpful in the way that it can change your perspective my perspective has completely changed on a lot of things and the way that I do things or think about things or just anything is so different than how it would be if I had never gotten diagnosed or diagnosed for a second time. And as I mentioned, me being most passionate about helping other people, yes, that's, that's why I created my channel. I, I wanted to be that person for others who don't have somebody like that. And I would video blog every single day, every day. And at the end of every week, I would upload a video. What I was going through, that being my bone marrow transplant, radiation, chemotherapy, everything like that, I was as real and as raw as I could be with my emotions to show other people going through the same thing that it's real and other people are going through it too. And... I just was hoping by that that I could be the greatest support for other people who might not have it. My greatest support would have to be others in the cancer community. I mentioned how I had my family and my friends, but even the people closest to you sometimes 
may not be able to relate and it can be difficult but that's why my greatest support was just others who knew who would just know exactly how I would feel and I'm sure with whatever condition you have there are su there are support groups out there and you can find other people who will be able to not just be there to pat you on the back and make you feel better but to tell you that it can be a terrible thing and it sucks sometimes but you're not the only one who's going through it and there's always tomorrow there's always the next day or the next week you just gotta look forward to the future and you can't just sit in that bad place that you're in and think that that's all that it's gonna be because there's always more and you should you should never just let one bad thing happening to you or a bad day or a bad week or just a situation that you're in don't let your life revolve around that because like I said there's always the next day or the next week or just a year from now just look into the future and know that it will get better and that's also kind of the best advice that I have as well my best advice for someone who is newly diagnosed is just to know that you're not alone because I know that sometimes it can feel like you're alone even when you're not even when you do have somebody in your life that might know what you're going through and even if they don't know a hundred percent of what you're going through they may have an idea and could still help you even just talking to them a little bit and I understand that sometimes you just you don't want to talk to anybody because I never really wanted to explain how I was feeling or how I felt to even my parents sometimes you just you don't want to talk about it at all and it really just depends if you don't want to talk about it don't feel like you have to talk about it but if you feel like talking to somebody will help you then I really think that you should talk to somebody and like I said it's it's hard to feel like you're alone because it happens but just know that there's somebody out there who is probably in the same shoes as you and they might even feel the same way but you're not alone what I would love to inspire in others is to help others if you feel like you're not being helped no one can help you because that's how I felt. I felt like what I was going through, no one could help me feel better. And that's the reason why I did what I did, why I shared my story. Because at least maybe then I could be helping one person. So I think our best way to inspire each other is to help each other and be there for the same people. Be there for other people in the cancer community. You have no idea who you could meet and what friendships you can make because I've made some of the best friendships that I think you could ever make in some of the deepest connections. So the best way to inspire each other or inspire yourself is just to do that, to be that inspiration for somebody or be that inspiration for yourself.